<laughs> Better late than never on a Wednesday in complete and total disheveled chaos mode. Yeah, we're both in t-shirts. Yeah, we're both wearing t-shirts. <laughs> you can tell we don't have clients coming in today. Uh, At least yours is an advertising yeah, company. Yeah, Portside Advertising. For all your boat advertising needs, ports. Uh, they don't just do boats. No. I don't think they have any boats. I don't think they do either. No, they only do starboard side. Star. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know what we're talking about. It's Wednesday. We we're super confused. We have no clue. We, we spent are. the day shooting in various locations all around the world yesterday. And by the world, yeah, I mean Mississippi. Exactly. Because it is its own world. It is its own world. Yes, yeah. it is. It's 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 where the wildlings are. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Little the southern rhymes. humor, y'all. Hey. There you go. As always, welcome to Inside Craft Show. Yes, welcome. And I think we said that welcome already. We have. That was and two this welcomes. Is, this is full blown shenanigans episode. Uh, I it hope is. you guys enjoyed the Bro Force. Um, that was uh, that was a nice little interesting. Yeah, it didn't work very well. We tried to set no. it up and we failed as always. We so did. Here we are. I believe I should probably pop up the chat like we you like probably to should do. right there. Yeah, there you go. And skadoosh. Oh, we. There we it's go. Morning time for Wally. Got a little got a little thing up there. Alex yeah. Eagle saying what up. Yep. What up, Alex? Yeah, it's crazy because Jeff doesn't get the orange over there for some reason. I don't get the orange. Oh, because you're not logged in. You did, oh, you, you went with Safari and not same, Chrome. Yeah. I don't like that's Safari. Right. I'm well, a Chrome guy. You know what? We're just doing it this way. I'm not an Apple guy at all. If, in so, fact, if I could, I'd cover up the Apple on my laptop. You kind of did. Talk about the iPhone X. How excited about that piece of crap are you? The iPhone? That's just for trolls. I'm just teasing them up. I'm kind of ready to, to not have the iPhone. Welcome to Samsung. Point. <laughs> Equally as annoying. I know, exactly. All cell phones are terrible. <laughs> they are. Uh, so a couple things. Let's talk about what we're going to talk Somebody about on the way show. Me. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about what we're going to talk about, which is uh, we're going to kind of go back and, and discuss the GH5, uh, having looked at it. Um, we've talked about the camera. Obviously, we started out making Inside Craft Show about something else and then got a little sidetracked on the just GH5. We just wanted to, uh, to, to talk about production and uh, go through the process of making advertising and film and all that stuff. And then we got kind of sidetracked with the GH5, so I know we've been a little GH5-centric. Um, I, I probably, uh, I'm going to just say it because I don't really care, we'll probably get a bunch of unsubscribers because we want to focus on enriching uh, everybody's abilities, uh, not just with one specific camera. I think limiting yourself to one camera is kind of like limiting yourself to one screwdriver. There's a whole lot more tools out there that can help you better. Yeah. So we're going to focus a little bit more going forward on some post-production techniques, including grading for log, which doesn't matter if it's shot on GH5, RED, or Alexa. Yeah. It's all the basic concepts. We want to talk about that in depth. We're going to talk about HDR, of yeah. course. We're fascinated with it. A lot more HDR. Jeff's already experimented on, on that. And yeah. we also kind of want to center in on, on general filmmaking, um, whether it's cinematography, art direction. We're going to hopefully stack in some interviews, uh, do other little things here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, Bring in a guest or two, maybe. Yeah, we're going to talk about how to shoot for the Pavarazzi. Yeah, the Pavarazzi? For the Pavarazzi. How, to shoot, how to shoot the Pavarazzi! <laughs> yep, we're all yeah, riled up. That works. So today we're going to just do a retrospective. Looking back, we've got some old B-roll. We'll talk about stuff. In case you've never seen some of these pieces before, it might be fun to look at. And we'll kind of talk about Could what be. we like, what we don't like, what is what is what what we see the GH5 doing, what it was for us in the past, because I think that's a really honest conversation, uh, what it is for us in the future or in the present and yeah. into the future. Well, it's definitely changed. Yeah, it's definitely changed. Definitely has. Um, and that's something I think we're talking about. And then to kind of tease into where we want to kind of steer ourselves a little bit to hopefully help inspire and grow everybody's unique abilities, uh, we want to kind of talk about uh, breaking down a scene. So we're going to go from a film that we own or we shot, whatever, we made. Um, it's called Convergence. Uh, you can watch it on Netflix. It's got a lot of bad reviews. That's just the truth. That's like awesome. it or hate it, I, I could care less. At the end of the day, I made something that me and Jeff and everyone else that worked on it was very happy with. Maybe even the producers watching right now. Hello, The Corner. <laughs> the Corner's got an accountant in it now, which seems only fitting. If you're watching The Corner, you'll know what I'm sure. talking about. Yeah, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Anyway, long, long story short of it, we're going to break down the scene today. And we're going to look at it, um, basically, what happens when you let the actors go on set. Because I happen to write this particular scene, so I know what I wrote. And then kind of getting to show you guys um, what the actors did with it. Uh, of course, that's also adjusted in editing. There's a whole lot of discussion I want to have just breaking down a scene. Because there's so much more to a scene than just pretty bokeh and hot uh, girls or guys. Fair enough. Oh, flowers. 
or flowers. So there's a lot more to it. So we just want to kind of break it down. We'll even talk a little bit about post, throw Jeff on, on, on the whim. That's Speaking fun. of Jeff and my wife, they happen to share something very much in common aside from True. the glorious one. <laughs> Glorious! I wish I had that. Setup. I know. If we had a queued up, it'd be amazing. <laughs> Aside from sharing me as their most important person in their life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Not Drew. Sarah. <laughs> Yeah, it's really confusing. <laughs> it is. Uh, now, aside aside from knowing me and 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 spending a lot of time with me, yeah, uh, they much. actually share a birthday. So today we is do. my wife's uh, <laughs> birthday, <laughs> and it's Jeff's forty. <laughs> Happy fortieth <laughs> birthday, forty forty. Thank you, thank He's thank so you. forty. He's forty, y'all. How's that? Forty. Old. I wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> I know that's fine. But I want to celebrate it. That's also, fine. nothing's changed. Also. Um, I got a quick story, but I, I got to bring a prop in to tell the story. Oh, what story is this? You don't know. I don't know. I got a prop. Can, can I bring in my prop? No, not yet. Uh, I want you, my you prop. Wait, you should trust me. My prop is good. I want to start looking through Your this prop. stuff for y'all. Ah, thank you. Your prop ain't got nothing on me. Oh, oh goodness, there's something else. I got a secret. Oh, he's got a secret prop. Oh, is this this can be the bottle. This is the bottle. So let's tell a story up. real quick. Oh, God. We finished our first movie, Jeff DP'd it, and we were shooting in, and we're going to get to comments, guys, don't worry. Yeah. We finished our first, we just need this beer first. We finished our first movie in 2012. It's a film called Skyhook, not available anywhere. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> uh, maybe for, for my sake. Somewhere there's a piece of artwork that says the VFX are amazing. They were made by a carrot. That's right. We used a carrot to make the VFX. Anyway... Uh, I would actually be honored if it would get riff tracks. That's a true pitch. Anyway, There's long story short of it, for that too. we, we were have in two movies for a very specific tracks. place, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm not going to say yeah. where because I don't want to give away our secret. And we happened to come across something very delightful, which is an ultra rare beer. Now, I have sat on this beer. I'm presenting oh, you. Were you were doing the wow. Holy crap. You're I have sat, if this? you've ever hear, heard me tell the story, I have sat on this beer. I have two children. You have the sat on this beer. The first child. I refuse to crack this beer. So this beer is bottle conditioned. It has been kept and, and kept precious in the dark. It is my precious, truly my precious. It is from 20, it was bottled in 2011, 12, 10, 2011. Uh -huh. And we are just now going to crack it today. The retail value on this beer is approximately 300 to $350. Yes. That's where it currently sits. I paid 85 for it. I did not crack it when my when I finished my first feature. I did not crack no. it on the second, third, fourth, or fifth feature. I didn't crack it when I had my first... Well, I didn't have anything. When my wife <laughs> shat out our first child, I didn't crack it then. Shittle. <laughs> Shittle. <laughs> I didn't crack it then. My second child, the surprise baby, when I should have probably cracked it, I didn't crack it because I just needed a moment to share it. I just needed an important moment. So all those are life-changingly epic important moments, but... None of them are as important as when I was in 1992 when I met this kid named Jay who went to a Metallica concert. He's probably watching. Who probably was getting is. harassed because the, the stupid jocks at our school were asking me if his head hurt from headbanging. And that led into a conversation about bass players, which let me meet <laughs> Jeff. And here we are some almost 30 years. Uh, yeah, 26. 26 27. years later. It's his 40th birthday. I've known him that long. I think Jeff deserves his beer. So I'm not Thank kidding. You. Like, seriously, this beer, you guys aren't going to be able to see it because it's going to be out of focus. But that beer is from 2011. Yeah. It could explode. I hope it doesn't explode. This could go terrible. It could also taste like shite. Well, but if whole... you're a craft beer snob, this is, yeah. this is not a our Goose usual Island yeah. It's a Goose Bourbon Island. County beer that was aged and I can smell it from right here and I haven't even oh my god this could be we could be Dangerous. drunk by the end of this episode uh, if we have uh, the second one it was aged in we'll Pappy Van Winkle barrels and they added uh, this is called the Bramble Rye so it has blackberries oh, and raspberries oh god yeah. Oh yeah, this is gonna be it a fun smells, episode. It smells of whiskey. So happy birthday, Jeff. Yeah, this is here. Be a good I can't even believe. Look, <laughs> no, I can't my hand is kind of shaking because it's been that long Hold on. of a journey for this beer. For the next one, because I'm going to. You get it out of the proper snifter. It's to be to be poured into a snifter. That's going on to the craft show Instagram. Yeah. 
Jeez. So yeah, this could be the most interesting episode we've ever done. I have to get every drop. You can have some drops. I'll have drops. Yeah, I know it's dead air. I don't really care. This beer right now is <laughs> y'all. Y'all don't. I've literally carried it with me for you really have. that many years. We'll put it front and center. It can live right here. It can be here. It well, might be blocking my face. I don't know. This... All right, so uh, let's all just yeah. salute Jeff. Happy birthday, turning forty. Cheers. Let's do it. To next year. Wow. Oh wow, that's good. That doesn't even taste. There's not even. There's, there's, there's not even an alcohol flavor. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. We're probably gonna get holy cow on this. Yeah, so this yeah. beer starts out, by the way, not to make this about beer, but it's pretty important to me if you can't tell. This beer starts out at 12.7, uh, six years ago. I think we're close to 15% at this point. It's, uh, at least. my chest is burning. It's like a, it's, yeah, but it's like really good whiskey right now where you don't feel it in, the, you don't get that mouth feel of burn. You feel it, holy cow, that's pretty funny. This is like my second Pappy experience yeah. in a weird way. Have you had, did I give you Pappy? Yeah. Yeah, so you've had some Pappy. All right. When we were in Chattanooga. Oh, that's right. I brought it up. Give me an amazing gaffer. Let's go to the comments and have a quick yeah. check in it's on the comments. It's a whole lot of happy birthdays. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you were going uh, to get hammered? Yeah. MPEG, it's going to happen, brother. I, You were going to take over the show. Where's, where's... Sean Corbett, happy birthday to your nephew. It's today as well. Oh, well, happy birthday there. Yeah. Only 180 proof. Don't drink the stuff at the bottom. Oh, I already poured the whole glass. Yeah. Too late. I don't think there was yeasty in it. No, there really wasn't. Yeah, a drunk live stream. This could go... Terribly. Uh, yeah. Should I move this? Should I move this to more here? Let's block the Apple logo. There you go. Get rid of that logo. There it is. We don't support or We endorse. totally support Bourbon County. We do. We're totally pimping the Bourbon County. I'm jealous. The sound of beer pouring is good enough for me. Great. Yeah. Cheers from Norway. Happy birthday, Jeff. Sup? Chest is burning from 50%. Are you really a southern boy? Trev? <laughs> I don't have it in here, but somewhere I have shine. That's all I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm a southern boy. Trust me. I just yeah, dropped my accent from all the hatred. All right, so checking the comments. Uh, no more GH5 content. Time to talk about the evil one. Yeah, that's actually not a bad point. We could we that's could not, have a little discussion about it. But I haven't touched ones. the camera. I it's all speculative. Yeah, so, so I can't really say. The one thing I don't want to get into is like... Just making speculative stuff about a camera we've never fiddled with. Yeah. So it doesn't really doesn't really work in that sense. So maybe what we should do is ask you guys, what do you think now? Um, and be honest. I mean, you're on you're on the internet right now with fake names, so you're good. No one knows who you are because clearly we see it in the comments. It's you know it's a free for all. Mm -hmm. But what what is your opinion? Uh, try and remove the fact that you spent money on it. Like that's the real that's the real test. Yeah. Right. So it's we have to test. remove the fact that we spent money on it yeah. too. So what is your opinion currently on the GH5? How do you guys feel about the GH5 uh, if you honestly ask yourself where it is? And the things that I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to limit anything. The one thing I don't want to talk about is autofocus. I'm just never going to talk about it because I don't, I yeah. don't know how to use it. I'm not going to use it. And it's not something that's, we were tempted to use it yesterday on a shoot, but instead yeah. Jeff pulled focus off the Leica 12 to 60, the very same lens that is, <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, Jeff was that reaching was around as I was doing this crazy yeah, thing crazy. Um, was... because we wanted to use that specific lens for a certain look. Yeah. Uh, I just, the autofocus thing is not something I'm really going to get into. I think there's better outlets that can give you better information. Certainly when firmware 2.0 officially releases for you guys, you can talk about it and drill those all day, but you will not. Unfortunately, if that's why you're here, I'm sorry. I just I'm not going to talk about it. Hopefully, you'll stick around and maybe learn yeah. other filmmaking techniques. But autofocus is not going to happen. I think Sean is the person that's the best suited to answer autofocus. Yeah, I think and he has the best guys. answer for it so far. Absolutely. So, so uh, <laughs> Sully Colchez, this is my name. Good for you. That's good branding, Sully. Well yeah. done, sir. Uh, Sully says G GH5 2017 camera of the year. Camera of the year? That's awesome. Sound. I'll never get it right. Called you out even in the Broforce video. Sound. Yeah, you did. Uh, gives it, uh, loves it. I'm here for the GH5 love. How many stops does HLG have compared to Vlog? We'll talk about that momentarily mm -hmm. or later on. Just remind me, Man, Brian. It's going quick right now. B Nelson, Nielsen. B Nelson, Nielsen. Just remind me to talk about that. I don't want to talk about it right now, but I will. Yeah. I love my GH5. I sold it. Uh, great. Uh, GH5, very happy. GH5 is awesome. Doc camera, I, that is a very fascinating that, that, point. I think actually, that's a brilliant yeah, point. And it is. I could use that to segue. It's you so could. good, but I won't. Um, that is correct. Thank you, MPEG, for answering that question for me. He's talking about HLG. 
If you have GH5, you can't use yes. a lack of good camera excuse for bad video quality. That's true. GH5 really exceeded expectations in every area, says Trav. Oh, you guys can see all this crap. I don't yeah, have to say anymore. I'm just saying it yeah. to the, the people who aren't yeah. reading the text, I guess. Trav um, is absolutely correct. Sean yeah. Corbett, I came from Canon 5D Mark II. The original badass, but yeah. GH5 has almost everything I wanted. Love it more and more every day. The biggest thing I've heard yes. from still guys moving over, they did both, you know, they're hybrid shooters, they're still in video. The biggest thing I've heard about the GH5, and I do think it's actually problematic, and I do understand this, the autofocus in terms of dealing with it for still photos. Um, and I assume that's what everyone's referring to uh, is actually the video side of it. But I heard in still photos, they uh, individuals were saying that they found it very, very, very frustrating. Um, or not as good as they had hoped. And I, and I don't know enough about still. I'm not a still shooter. I'm not a, a journo. Um, I had a great conversation with the guy that was on set yesterday that was doing stills. Yes. And he was a little nervous very awesome about it. Very awesome dude. Yeah, very cool Actually, guy. Yeah, I like him a lot. Um, but he was, he was kind of nervous about the GH5 for, for the amount of stills work he wants to do. Yeah. But he's a photojournalist. And so, like, for him, he does a lot of sports. He was jacked about, what is it, the, a, the Sony A9264. Yeah, he's, he's jacked about the A9. That's what he wants is the A9. Yeah. So, okay, separate issue. So I, I can't really comment on the stills. But what I think is interesting is what I've read is those hybrid shooters are really in love with it. Uh, they're really connected to it. So let's kind of just go, uh, Jeff's typing a comment. I am, I'm commenting the one person Okay, here. copy you. Um, let's I'm take good. a sip of this. Guys, I'm telling you, this is unreal. Very surreal beer. Woo! Man, that is punchy. Yeah, it's, it's very all, punchy. It's almost like a, not a sour, but it has like, it's like someone got drunk and mixed a sour it's kind with of, a, yeah, it kind of is a, little a sour coffee style. Yeah. It's good though. It's it is not, very it good. It doesn't taste spoiled. No, it's sour. not. A, it's the right yeah. kind of controlled thing. All right, so um, let's kind of talk about what is, uh, let's go in with your preconceived notion. So let's go all the way back pre-GH5. I'll just throw some stupid B-roll up. No, well, I'll do that in a second. Let's, let's go back to, uh, uh -oh, we got a little hang up there. Let's go back no. to pre-GH5. Uh, had you worked with Micro Four Thirds at all? Stills. What about the Black Magic Pocket Camera? Is yeah, that Micro Four Thirds. Yeah, it is Micro Four Thirds. You're right. I have worked with that before. Uh, whole different level of uh, problems for me going into it. Right. But uh, that was more color issues and raw footage issues of Black Magic. Right. Than GH5. Right. I never shot a single thing on any M. Micro Four Thirds camera. Yeah. I never touched it. And if uh, anybody doesn't know what a Micro Four Thirds camera is, and they're hanging on for another reason, it just means tiny sensor, right? And I'm not going to go into specifics. If you have questions, please hit up the comment bar. These individuals are basically engineers and can answer yeah. for you. Um, some very awesome people in this one. Yeah, there's some really great people watching right now. That is, I, again, I wish I could capture this. I should have thought about how to capture it. It's yeah. much better upload to put the comments up there. It is. Um, I should figure out. Maybe I can do that right now. <laughs> hey, uh, I got it. I got a plan. Warning, quality may be reduced. Uh oh. Should we take the risk and record it? Yeah, well, let's see what happens. Let's do it. Record it. Let's see what happens. Um, uh, won't let me. Okay. Well, all right. Oh, well. Another time, though. Another time, I'll put the comments up there. Yeah. Anyway, so Micro Four Thirds was new to me. My opinion of it, having been a red owner um, primarily and shot primarily on that space. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, I shot one feature on. Skyhook was actually shot on yeah, T3 eyes, but eyes. that's a whole separate issue. A whole um, separate story. Yeah. But my opinion on it, having come from film and very cam, um, kind of tape world, yeah. and into this stuff, is I didn't have low expectations. I just didn't have any expectations. So I wasn't like down on it. I wasn't snobbing my nose to it, but I never thought it would be something I'd be interested in at all whatsoever. And so. Uh, when an opportunity arose with Unink Studios, our buddy Kyle, if you've seen some of those videos, when that kind of popped up and we started talking about it, we're like, let's sit down and test the camera. He's like, you, you got to check out the GH5. It looks, it looks really good. Jeff had talked about some specs, and then another friend of mine had mentioned uh -huh. it. We we're actually about to buy a C100. Yeah, we were talking about it. Just for a workhorse, because we were doing a lot of DACO style stuff. And Daco so, interview. yeah, DACO interview type stuff. And so we didn't. We held off. Yep. And then, uh, we just sat there for it for a bit. And then the GH5 came along and we tested it. And um, if you guys, I don't have that video in here. I kind of wish I could find it. But if you go back and, and look, if you're ever bored, go back and look at the beginning of the channel. And we we set up and did these tests and I was filming on my Samsung Galaxy S8 uh, for that. Mm -hmm. And then we had the camera. We had the red Scarlet versus the GH5. It was the first time we wanted to see if it would mix as a B camera. We were looking at it yeah. to be a B camera. 
And we filmed an African American guy named Dino, yeah. who you've seen in some other stuff, and it matched up insanely well. It really did. Like two expectations. Quite impressive. Level. Yeah. yeah. I think the bigger thing that we came away from it was that the the uh, post production process back then, that's pre GH five update and premiere, uh, just wasn't working. Um, oh, that's really yeah, nice. Yeah, really nice. Thank you, MPEG. That's really nice, MPEG. Yeah. I truly appreciate that. Very much so. Um, but yeah, so we we sat there and, and we kicked through it and and kind of found ourselves going, wow, this actually matched up pretty well, and we got excited about it. And so one of the things I was going to jump back to you going? is I think this video, Where you going to? I don't know. Hang on. Hold on. It wouldn't be a, an episode of this show if I didn't exactly. set up all the audio correctly, which I have not uh, set up. Yeah, that one's good. Well, we kind of, we did have a couple yeah, of sorry, different problems you earlier. You told me your opinion. What was your issue? With this camera? Yeah, or what were your thoughts early on? My early thoughts were uh, I was not thinking this camera was going to do very much for me at all. Honestly, uh, it was when we did the RED versus GH5, the very first RED versus GH5 test, that made me start to really consider this camera for us. Uh, I'm personally, I'm my Drew, not a big Bite Magic fan per se, even though I do, I have pushed one camera on him pretty hard, Bite Magic wise, to try. Um, yeah, this camera I didn't really, I didn't have high hopes for it when it first came out. Um, I come from a different background than Drew. Uh, I have gone on and was shooting a lot more on Alexas and stuff like that. So, in a way, I kind of did think I was, uh, I guess I was kind of snobby with it at first. No, yeah. honestly. I, you know, not trying to be snobby about it, but, you know, it just kind of the way it was. Uh, then when we did that first test, I, I became a fan. Yeah, I mean that's that first test kind of shifted it, but um, I became a fan in, in in a very quick sense, like a wow, this is really fun, and, and kind of got yeah. bit by the hype bug, because we had it there. I mean, we had problems yeah. through all our tests when we were first messing with it, because there was just oh, yeah, the logic of lenses problems. of trying to remember all these crop factor issues, and I'd gotten yeah. so used to Super Thirty Five and not having to worry about, it, and Four K is Four K, and I'm not thinking about okay, so this Thirty Five is a seventy two point six, and I got a, yeah. I couldn't, I didn't have the you know, that was all stuff I didn't have to deal with with red, and then we get to this, and then I'm like, you gotta get a speed booster, and then I start reading about this stuff, and it doesn't, I'm not trying to shoot everything wide open and, and, and hoping. Um, I'm trying to shoot things controlled, lit, and purposeful. Yeah. Um, so let's see if this B-roll works. Let's it? see what our B-roll is here. What do we got? Oh, okay, oh, so okay. it's a little anamorphic B-roll. Is it? So then that's the other side of it. Then all of a sudden we get access to look at the camera as uh, an anamorphic camera and so what we have is this is just an old episode so this is just footage we're showing yeah. of that little anamorphic j uh, gag test we did but looking at this content you know again looking at this suddenly we're shooting anamorphic with the camera later on down the road and we're able to kind of play with the camera in a whole different light which felt way more cinematic than even the red for some reason because we had never shot i'd never shot anamorphic on that particular red yeah it never been anything that we had driven into. My my anamorphic past was always as a as an operator AC type scenario, um, having not really done a ton of DP with it. But it's it's basic principles. I mean the the cinematography, but being able to have access to this and play with it and, and kind of toy with it uh, was pretty pretty fascinating to me. In that way that we were able to kind of jump in and do it. So then we have again this is just knuckle turd footage. This is us literally messing around with the lenses. Uh, obviously I play my own villain. Uh, I play the my, most southern person I've ever played. Yeah, Jeff's most southern person. <laughs> but having this camera with an anamorphic feature, whether you want to use anamorphic or not, doesn't really matter. The fact that it has it and it does such a great job uh, is what I think is really fascinating. So there's another tick mark in the old um, the old box. So I'm going to come back yeah. to us. So there's another little checkbox in, in, in that here we are with a GH5 shooting anamorphic, getting really good images. Anything happening over there? Anything fun? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the stuff uh, while we and Tyler also pitched in, which I was getting ready to say what we should do with this. Is drink more beer. Well, I and mean, we basically have a six-pack mm -hmm. built in. But I'm thinking whatever's pitched in we use for the lunch test. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's it. a good point. That's a great point. That would be a birthday present for someone like Jeff. Yeah. I had, but it it's, goes back to the community as well. Yeah, yeah. And everybody benefits, you know, um, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, it's the anamorphic talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
sound it is very expensive to do anamorphic if you want to purchase it but that's the other side of it it is so here's where here's let, let's continue through the process and talk it out here's the funny thing about dealing with the um you need to call out those people by the way thank you when you get a chance just oh, make well, list of them no. just, yeah, yeah but I do it while, while they do yeah. it it's better but anyway uh, Owning lenses is one thing, owning a camera body, but here's another tick in the plus box of the GH5 is here we have a $2,000 camera that for the most part, uh, you know, I think our kit, not the full kit, we're going to talk about that in a second, but the, the, but the basic kit for us just to slap on a mic and go shoot. What we're using right now is about $3,800, right? So we have 30, well, about four grand. So we have about four grand invested, maybe less, maybe it's 35. So this camera? Yeah. With this, this current setup? With that current setup, yeah, it's a thousand dollar lens, thousand dollar body, that's three grand. That microphone's yeah, four hundred bucks. That's eight hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, so we're we're right at we're right at four grand. So we have a four thousand dollar rig, and it works, and it does everything, and I can do a ton of stuff with it, and it's a fantastic camera, and I love it in that sense. However, it also affords me the ability that instead of spending thirty five grand on a red, when I may or may not shoot that many red projects a year remove all the tech babble who gives a crap let's yep. talk about what's going to make you money because i'm in the, i'm in a business this isn't a hobby for me exactly this is a hobby doing inside craft show is somewhat of a hobby but like literally the business of using cameras is for me to profit so for us to look at it we're looking at it for a business case business expense two thousand dollars to put that on there then suddenly i have a ton more money to rent additional lenses or if I'm using this to supplement our bigger camera I've already got multiple lenses rented I can slap them on there as a sub camera or as a B camera as the as the subservient camera is what I was going to say to a bigger camera it's the best investment I could ever come up with because we've matched them and now we've pushed it even further mm -hmm. so then we kind of just get into where the new firmware is going and then all of a sudden this is the 400i uh, anamorphic mode by the way this is some yeah. of the firmware stuff okay yeah, 4K, 400i anamorphic. So now suddenly we have anamorphic content and the eye content that's even closer to the red and makes it even easier to make those matches and control that color and control that balance even better. So my thing is anamorphic, yes, it is expensive if you want to own it. Yes. As a hobby, absolutely anamorphic is golf, right? And it's high-end golf where you only play on private courses level golf. It's true, right? Yeah, it really it's gonna is. cost you a fortune. That way. It's going to cost you a fortune, yeah. right? But the truth of it is, if you play on public courses and have a lot of fun and sneak beers onto the course, then <laughs> what you can do is then take the camera and rent. And that's the yeah. best part. Rent lenses. Rent, rent, rent. Because it's going to save you a ton of money. So plan your stuff out. And you're going to spend two, three hundred, four hundred dollars $400 on a rental, shoot the epic content you want to do, and then turn around and go out with it. Well, if you're saying, I want to shoot anamorphic all the time. Cool. Then know that you're going to spend four or five grand on a single lens because you're not going to afford an anamorphic zoom unless you happen to have $75,000 plus lying around. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe you can get one a little bit you less. You can get but cheaper. But Still, the point not is that, not a quality yeah. lens. No. So if you're going to get an anamorphic zoom, all of a sudden you're spending a lot more money. And by the way, you're yeah. welcome to uh, sub us if you want to you know, throw the cash that yeah. way. That'd be fantastic. Point is, oh, thank you, Alec. That's yes, thank just perhaps. Yep. That's super nice of you guys. So I would rent. And you can go to places like lensrentals.com. Lensrental.com. Not rentals. Sorry. Lensrental.com. You can also go to borrowlenses.com. Yeah. Rent the glass. In fact... That's what we're going to do with this test we want to do coming up, is rent. I'm actually lenses. going to call out another place, too. Uh, oh, Jeff's got another one. It's uh, Brainstorm. Brainstorm. It's a camera place out of L.A. where you don't have to have recommendations or anything like that uh, to be able to. You don't have to be vetted, right? per se, right. to be able to rent from. And we've we've rented for from them for your movies before. Yeah, absolutely. So. So that's another angle is, is just looking at rental to save yourself some money. That's the anamorphic side of it. So another good tick note is the camera costs so little that you don't have to spend a ton of money in putting it, you yeah. know, you can, you can afford to rent lenses if you're doing a project. My and recommendation that we have not followed. There are apparently leaf blowers yeah. right outside. Okay. Um, is if you find a certain type of lens mount that you like, buy the adapter. Yeah, that, that will save you a ton of money. That will, because renting an adapter is going to just eat into your profits. Trust me. Uh, so Trust yeah, us. Exactly. We've rented the same PL mount. We should have our initials engraved on I know. because we, we just need to buy the dadgum thing and we haven't done it. So that's another tick box in that. Now, yeah. 
One of the things that I find very interesting that's a big discussion on all of this is a lot of people I've seen lately, and this is not necessarily to this group, but in other Facebook groups that I've seen, uh, people complaining about low light. And I just want to show this this shot again. I'm obsessed with yeah. this shot. This is low light. Nothing's been done to this. This is straight off the camera. And I don't really see what the big deal is. If this is straight off the camera, then the GH5 performs pretty well in low light. Does it do as well as an A7S II? No, but I hate that camera. I think it looks like crap. As soon as you push anything on that camera, any sort of measure on that camera, uh, in my opinion, that Sony falls apart and I don't want to have to spend 36 hours to grade one shot. It's just not worth the effort to me. It means that in my business, I'm spending more money grading a shot than I am yeah. doing or making money. And that's not, again, as a hobbyist, go for it. But as a business owner, that makes no sense to me. This stuff is straight off the camera. And I'm sure you guys are seeing it on a 10, uh, on, a, on a, what is this, 1080p, 30 frames a second, shitty, shittle live stream. So if you're judging it on that, uh, well, I'm sorry. I can see it right here. It's, it looks terrible. It does right there. Yeah, it looks awful. That's a terrible... But, it, the bit rate's garbage. Yeah, the, the point is, is who cares? Like at the end of the day, I can tell you it looks good. And if you don't trust my opinion, I don't care. I like it, and it works for me. So that's another tick box in in the greatness of the camera itself. Is the GH5 actually performs pretty well in low light? Uh, if you haven't seen Heirloom, I'm not pushing our product on you. I'm pushing. Uh, a camera test on you that happens to have a narrative. If you don't want to watch the movie for the narrative, turn music off. I suggest turning on something really interesting like Russian Circles or Ooh. what else? Cinematic Orchestra or anything by Hans Zimmer and just put it underneath it and watch it as a camera test. And, and it doesn't matter if you have HDR or not. Forget the grade. The grade doesn't matter then. If you don't have HDR, who cares? But watch the film and look at it from a camera test perspective because then you can actually see how the film exposes. And we yeah. purposely put ourselves in difficult situations situations with the camera we did and let it play as the way it was and it played exactly as the way it was and it was great all right so there's some of the pluses so i think overall the gh5 has a tremendous amount of pluses and i think looking forward uh having been able to play with the all eye the 6k high res anamorphic being able to touch all those things i think truly uh it's not that just that it could be the camera of the year i don't even know if that's a real thing i have no idea but i do think it's a really interesting piece of technology out this year did it change a lot of games no it didn't um, not until that firmware drops. I believe right now the camera is good, but I think the firmware, the 6K high-res anamorphic is a major, major differentiating factor. I think HLG in the camera is a major differentiating factor. I think all of those pieces, so when the camera first dropped, I think it's good. I think it's a great camera. I like the GH5, it does really well. I think when the firmware comes out, um, future-proofing it, I think that camera becomes a workhorse. Uh, it kind of reminds me and kind of feels like they're paying attention back in the days of like, when they first launched the Varicam, um, Lumix, uh, the Lumix division, this line, completely different from the other division, right, the cinema division, but I feel like this camera is on par with the cinema division. What I've seen, I think all the filmmakers that shot for EVA 1 videos look fantastic. I just happen to think that there's been content shot on the GH5 that looks better. That's personal opinion. Not saying the EVA 1's bad. I just happen to look at it from a very different perspective than a lot of people. I'm looking at baseline images. I don't care about grades or shot structure. That's their business. That's I'm not critiquing yeah. that. I'm critiquing the technology. I think a lot of people don't critique the technology, but that's a different rant I'll save. Yeah. Do you have any kind of closing thoughts on the good of the GH5? Uh, from a colorist perspective, the log, any of that crap? Yeah, and the log is actually a very good log. It, it holds up, I think, to what I have seen past my desk before in S-Log. And uh, Canon's version with uh, Cinema Raw, Cinema DNG, which I can't stay in that format, by the way, for anybody. Um, yeah, it, it holds up quite well with all the other cameras of its capabilities. Right. Um, you know, I, it, to me, it doesn't matter. No, you can pick the, Trev, you can pick the evil one. I, I'm not, you might get blown up by comments, but me, personally, I... I haven't touched it. I haven't touched the EVA 1, so I can't say what it's going to do. I don't know how well it's going to work, so I can't buy in the hype because you guys understand now that to some extent, Heirloom, though we use it as a camera test to package something really unique. Wow, that beer is strong. To, yes, package, strong. Something, to package something unique was essentially also kind of a marketing video. Yeah. So think yeah. about the hype side of the marketing element of it and just being brutally honest yeah. about it, but like 
get your hands on the camera before you use it. If you buy a GH5 based on heirloom, first off, that's awesome. Thank you. Please send an email and let sh or, yeah. or tag Sean Robinson and tell him you bought it because of us. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We don't get any credit, but that's still pretty awesome. Exactly. But the reality is don't buy a single damn camera until you play with it. Rent it for just like a lens. Rent the lens first. Yeah. There's no reason not to. buy. If you're buying a camera and you need the first lens, buy a cheap first lens that's just going to get you by. And then start renting lenses and playing. Well, let you explore and yeah. do some storytelling. Practice then it that learn, way. Yeah, and then start getting bigger and better with... Uh, totally. Depending on what you're doing. Right. You know, like whenever we do a shoot, we talk out what lens we want to shoot with. And right. Usually there's four or five that hit the pot. Right. Right? And then we stir around, figure out which one we want. Um, for me, I'm... Uh, I, I would choose the Evil One at this moment myself, personally, but it's the pickiness of, all, in all honesty, SDI in and out. <laughs> so like, SDI out, time code, stuff like that, that's just, uh, that's the AC in me, looking for easy ways to do it, and not have to do with HDMI. Um, yeah, firmware, yeah. Jefu, firmware in just a few days, that is the rumor. We don't, we don't actually know, don't think that we do. Yeah, um, I mean, the rumor is, what the end of September? Yeah, sometime. So Sully's asking about a crash show Facebook group. No, we tried to make one. I'm a stupid head. If someone wants to make it, I'll help. Just make me an admin, and I'll help you deal with well, it. You did start one. Yeah, but that was but a different you, story. Yeah. You Andres, a, uh, what lens would you suggest? The Leica 12 to 60. I think it's the best lens they make um, for yeah. the most versatility. I've stolen so many shots with it. I think it's a great lens. It does what it needs to do. Uh, and it will make you a better cinematographer by using it because you can't just cheat and be like, oh, I walked into a room and I shot at 0.9. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that you're a better cinematographer because you shot at 0.9. It means that you got lazy and didn't set up a light. That's what it means. So I would suggest a 12 to 60, Andres, answer your question. Charbox, I'm hoping the autofocus is fixed in 2.0. Char, I know, brother. I know that's a big deal to you. I don't know anything about it. Hopefully it is for you guys. Anybody that needs the autofocus, I hope it is fixed for you. I can't comment it on it. I won't do a video on it. I'm not even going to talk yeah. about it or touch it because there's way more people that have done it better than I have. Yeah. And we just don't all, give a shit. All I'll say about it is... Not rudely. We just don't yeah. give a shit. Uh, Sean says that it is vastly improved to him. Take that however you want to, but... Uh, Trev. Yeah, I'm like you. I just it doesn't really matter to me. So Trev, uh, this is where I was going. Great segue. Trev uh, says, "Is there any work that you would do that you wouldn't really, you would be really uncomfortable if the GH5 was the only camera at your disposal?" Absolutely. Let's talk about the negatives of the GH5. So one of them is, I'm just going to put some B-roll on. This is that location scouting content. Now, the GH5 did nothing wrong in this location scout, right? It did everything that we wanted it to do. It shot really well. Yeah, it definitely did. But as you guys now know, the 6K high-res anamorphic does not have HDMI out. Yeah, that so, kind of irritated us quite a bit on the location if, scout. If I'm trying to deliver a really high-end image out of the camera, yeah. uh, the 6K, the fact that I do not have the ability to monitor my image, um, the GH5 at that point, uh, no, I'd use the red. I wouldn't even touch the GH5. I wouldn't even use it as a B cam at that point. I might, I, I tell you back, I might do it mm. if my finish is 2K. Uh -huh. If my delivery medium is 2K, then the GH5, um, 6K high res anamorphic in that space is fine. But the fact that it doesn't have it um, in a professional level of having monitoring out because it can't, it physically can't do it, uh, hurts it. That said, if I wanted to shoot 4K, as I've said earlier, the all I 4K uh, anamorphic, I would use it then. Yeah. Fair enough? Yeah. I would also use the 6K high res anamorphic in, with a spherical lens if I knew I was going to reframe and I was doing something where sharpness yeah. actually mattered to me. I'd use 6K anamorphic also uh, tr as a traditional C camera on right. a feature. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, a sure. long lens on Any it. C cam all if day. If you get yeah. it, you get it. If yeah. you don't, whatever. Yeah, um, I also probably kind of wouldn't use it on a really critical, uh, until this, this card situation gets sorted, I wouldn't use it on, on any sort of really critical um, scenario. So if I were getting hired to shoot, well, we have one coming up. We have a pretty, pretty notable interview coming up, and we pitched them to use the GH5 to, yeah. do, the, to do the interview. And they said, no, we want to shoot on the red. Because the GH5 still doesn't have the brand recognition yet uh, to not, back it yes. up. Um, and yesterday, we had Delkin card failure. And we weren't shooting all we I. We did. We were shooting yeah, in we were long, shooting gob, long gob. And we had Delkin card, oh. not failure, but it was very slow to close out on yeah. the writing side. So you'd, hit, you'd record for a while, you'd pause the recording, and it took forever. And not just on long, long clips. I'm talking about like 30 seconds yeah. to a minute clips were taking like... 
10, 15 seconds to close out. That's a problem to me. Uh, I'm not a huge yeah. fan of it. I just got an email from Paige. Um, yeah, you did. Not, not a huge fan of it. So, You're not going to be a huge fan of that, <laughs> what the subject matter is. Oh, no, I'm sure it's terrible. Um, <laughs> so not a huge fan of, of that side of it. Uh, the Delkin cards, they didn't work as well. Um, they did work for us on the anamorphic shoot. We didn't have that many problems, but we weren't shooting all eye. We were shooting 6K high-res anamorphic, uh, and that's where that is. So I do find those a little problematic. Let's come back over here. I do find those a little bit problematic uh, to deal with. The Delkin cards, I think that's an issue, so I couldn't use it in that sense. Another negative is time code, the lack of time code. I yeah. know that I can send time code through an audio channel. I'm not totally comfortable with that yet. I haven't tested it enough to really put it to use. So I would also say that time code, the absence of time code, definitely if I was doing a true multicam piece and there were VFX involved, uh, that makes me a little nervous. Uh, another big downside to me is the fact that it's micro four thirds. Uh, I hate the fact that I have yeah. to use a lens conversion model in my head to figure out what exact lens I'm shooting on, which means if I were doing heavy VFX, I probably wouldn't use the GH5 as a primary principal camera um, um, without a whole lot of pre-pro, which often we don't get. I would use it as a great witness camera, but not as a pre-pro camera. That's a major downfall to me because... Yeah. I, I need to know exactly what the lens is to millimeters and I don't want any variation in it and I don't want to bring into a speed booster and then cause even more math problems, uh, especially for the way I approach things, sometimes very quickly and organically. And if I want to be able to move around, I don't want to have to sit there and think out the math um, if it is a, a, a quick shoot, right? If it's yeah. a long process and I'm forced to use the GH5 in a heavy VFX thing, I don't care, whatever. I'll take yeah. the time to map out each lens and know exactly what yeah. the diameters are and nail it that way. Yeah, I'm just got to do all the camera tests for it. Exactly. It's, uh, uh, it's the other hard. downside, I think V-Log in the GH5 does have some color issues, if not exposed perfectly. Uh, unlike red, I can get away yeah. with some stuff. Yeah. In in V-Log, um, there's no room for error, and I think... Very little room. Yeah. You I mean, there's stuff he could some. fix, but yeah. it's still... And I think the issue with it becomes that a lot of people... Our vlog is a professional tool, not a hobbyist tool. Not saying hobbyists can't use yeah. it, but it's a professional tool. That means you've got to put a lot of dedication into it. So I think a lot of people are spending $100 um, on a tool that they don't know how to use and haven't been trained on and don't really understand the science behind, and they just go out and start shooting with it. And this isn't a negative on the camera. This is a negative on the users of the camera. They suddenly uh, fill the Facebook feeds and other groups with really stupid, terrible questions about noise when they have no idea what they're talking about and have never really evaluated against something else. And this is my rant about that. Here's with all the negatives, and I've read so many negatives because there's so many trolls, but all of these people that are focused on the stupidest possible shittle on the planet, you sound like a baby seal. Every time I read these posts, it's like, or, 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 or. You're begging for a fish to get thrown down to you because you want a $2,000 camera to do everything ever. It's not that a $2,000 camera does everything a red does. You're asking for a $2,000 camera to do literally everything ever. You want it to be basically a DSLR Jesus. That's what you want out of it or whatever you believe in. You want it to be the absolute epitome of everything and it's not going to happen. Because it's $2,000 and they can sell new features in the EVA 1 that this camera doesn't have. And guess what? The EVA 1 doesn't have features that the very cam have. So at the end of the day, they're going to market you a product for you to purchase. So if you are getting this much awesome out of a $2,000 camera, hot damn, you've got a badass thing in front of you and use it to tell great stories and stop going, or, 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 I don't know what to do about autofocus. Then figure out how to shoot better or move on. Don't bitch at the camera. It's not going to change anything. They probably can't because there's so much engineering that none of us really understand unless you are an engineer, maybe MPEG, unless you are an engineer gets into it. Stop just with the whining. In fact, just accept it and move on. And the other side of this, and I'm almost done cutting my promo here, folks, is if you're not going to take the time to light a scene and you expect to walk into a dark room and have it exposed, kiss my shittle. I'm done with that. I'm sick of that crap. Do you know why it doesn't look good? Because you didn't expose the shot properly. Because you're trying to walk in there with nothing and get nothing from nothing. It's like taking a screwdriver and making it into a hammer. Can you do it? Sure, it'll work. But is it as good of a tool as a hammer? No. So if you need to shoot in pitch black darkness at night, two things. Get a night vision lens, get an A7S2, right? 27S2. 
12 6. And take one of those and use it to film your nighttime scene bonanza. But as soon as you put an actor in that, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as you put an actor into that scene and you expect that actor to be exposed properly and look good and, and give you a performance and you're going to half ass shoot it, no, you don't deserve a camera. You deserve an iPhone. You can take the iPhone X and go shoot that because I'm done with that kind of stuff. It's so stupid, baby seals. I'm done with your baby seal crying. You know what? Just get the fish. Take whatever fish the internet gives you. I'm over it. And if we lose subs over this rant, I don't even give a flying shittle. There you go. I've had some drinks. <laughs> you have You're getting raw, Drew, right now. There. I'm just all done right. with the complaining. So at the end of the day, all I want to do is just at least say this. Complain all you want because I complain too. In fact, I had a nice fight with my wife. She, she needed to vent and I was an asshole. I apologize, Sarah, if you're watching this. I doubt you are. I'm sorry I was an asshole to you on your yeah, birthday. It's not Facebook. It's a pretty bad asshole. That's a pretty big asshole right there. I'm a big asshole. I just want to encourage you to try and grow your craft. And if you, and if you don't want to grow your craft... Then don't get mad at the camera. Get mad at yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that's failing, not the camera. You, the DP, are the failure. You, the self proclaimed DP, are the failure. And don't call yourself a cinematographer unless you got an ASC, CSC, BSC beside your title, because those dudes earned that shit by working their butts off all the way up the chain, putting up with crazy, insane crap. I don't call myself a cinematographer because I'm not. He's not. I've only met one in my life. Nope. I've worked with several, but I've met one and got close to being friends with one in my I've life. I've met a couple. And his name is That's Alex it. Funky, and he has three Oscars. Yep. Three Oscars. So let's not, don't, don't do that. Just focus on you. Grow your craft. Work hard. Get better. I'm sure the comments have blown up. I have no idea. Poor Jeff is trying to keep up with them. If you guys hate me. I'm actually, actually doing the conversation. I hope you Everybody's don't. behind you. I hope, Everybody's I hope actually you push yourself behind and push other people. But don't be an asshole to them because that doesn't do anything. <laughs> I've already tried that method. So from this point forward, a couple of things to share with you that are fun on this. First off, we're going to get a Baby Seal Troll Force shirt made. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm, and the Baby we Seal are in Troll the process of it. Yeah, it's going to be like a challenge coin. If you, oh, if you wear, and then we have to. Oh yeah, we'll plug that. Yeah, we got to plug that in there too. If you're wearing a Baby Seal Troll Force shirt or BSTF, you can wear that shirt. Use it as a hashtag. Anytime you get frustrated with somebody, just hashtag it BSTF. Let them just get confused on what it is. Who cares, right? Because what we're going to do is make a movement where uh, suddenly we start aligning all the people who give a shit that actually want to sit down and learn and get better. Because I learned from you guys. Don't think I'm some egotistical f -tard <laughs> standing on his box right now giving a You're preaching not. thing. I'm not. I learned so much from you guys. It's nuts. We should be sharing this info back and forth. I absorb it when I'm wrong. Will Stone uh -huh. loves to call me on Facebook when I'm wrong. You're right, Will. I was wrong about the exposure level. But I'm right about sure. HLG, so leave me alone. So at the end of the day, it's about us growing. So we're going to put out these shirts. It helps fund the channel. We're going to use the money to rent, buy, get an yeah. Evil One, break more shit, rent do more crazier stuff, things, more things, come to you. We really sure. want to just like literally go on the road and just shoot crazy shit with our friends, which is you guys, yeah. and just do crazy stuff. We'll figure it out. We'll come to Europe. I don't care. Thailand. I hope that guy from Thailand's watching. He was a really good guy. He got roasted yeah. yesterday on Facebook for no reason. I was trying to be positive, but I think I came across like a jerk. Uh, anyway, he gets roasted a lot, though, unfortunately. Don't forget Baby Seal Troll Force. Hashtag yep. BSTF or Baby Seal Troll Force. BSTF. There it is. It just think about it. When you hit that mark, it. when you're tired of it, just hit that. And then you know what it means? It's like a challenge coin. In the military, they have challenge coins. And it's like when you walk yep. in, if you have your challenge coin, you know that someone's your brother. So at yep. this point, we've created our own, say, hey, this is my brother. This is my sister. This is someone who's dealing with a struggle. Yeah. I'm going to help them. So if someone has, even if you're asking a question, it's not just on negative people. If you're asking a question, you really want honest answers, hashtag it that. I track it. So we should all yeah. track it. And then guess what happens? The Baby Seal Troll Force rolls in and we help you out. Whether we bail you out of an argument or we stand behind you, we suddenly created this unity. And now we have a whole new thing. And we can talk about GH5 and we can make questions specific to that. Or we can talk about filmmaking or like Ichidomo, homeboy with the, the anamorphic skills. I learned, I learned from this dude. He's teaching me some stuff that's great. So I think if we build on that, we can all build and shape each other in a much better way. Okay, rant over. That's what happens when I have a few drinks, especially this one that's like 27% alcohol. The show runs long. God knows we haven't got the last bit. Jeff, do you have any negatives about the GH5? <laughs> I think you pretty much explained everything that I needed to know. Here, you want me to go up a little bit? I can go up for you. We got the hashtag is starting to go. Yeah, good. Make it work. Charbax, you're more than a baby seal. Sail your rewind. I love listening. You, you know what I talked? Here's the other thing that's happened. We had a great conversation with our buddy Sailing. 
We did. Lovely oh, convo. Great conversation. Clearly Here's one you experience. need to look at, though, while yep. we, because, uh, oh, you can't see my, that's right. I can't see. I don't. Man, after that rant, I wish I could subscribe twice. Alex Funky walks up and down his hill for fitness. Go so, talk to him. Yeah, go talk tell to Alex. Alex tell, we him, said, hey. tell him you know. Go, yeah. Seriously, go he up to Alex us. Funky and be like, hey, Alex, I've seen Ether. Just go up to him and tell him you've seen yeah. Ether and that you're friends with Drew Hall and Jeff Worley yeah. from Mobile, and he'll know exactly who we are. Exactly. Do it. He's a super personal guy. Gosh, super nice guy. Super dude. Like, do he it. He is a just and if a he's wealth a jerk, of knowledge. If he's a jerk. Just walk away because I mean he could yeah. have a lot on his mind. He, he knows what's going on in anybody's social life. Every time that we've talked to him though, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he kind of had to be nice to you. Not really, but kind of. But because uh, you were the director. Yeah. But for me, he didn't have to. No. You know, and no. me and him talked quite a quite a bit. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. Trump down here. got to save the baby seals. <laughs> That's classic. Love it. Craft show is being broadcast from the Vatican? What? What? Are we really? That's pretty No, rad. I think that's most likely. This is Jefu, uh, yeah. our good buddy. He exactly. likes being called that. Um, all right, so what, did you have any negatives aside from the crazy uh, rant? Uh, the time code's a massive one for me. Um, but it's also, that's what I was sitting here talking about in the group discussions. It, it's massive, but it's not. Uh, I've had Alexa's drift more than three minutes off from a jam sink. Yeah. So, I mean, at we know the same time... We know Yeah, reds notoriously bad, not just ours. Yeah. All reds are. Um, but, I mean, hand syncing, it's it's not fun to do. It's nice. It's a lot to, easier now in nice, Premiere. Nice, it's nice to have that jam sink in there, yeah. which is why I'd like to have it. Um, honestly, I'm the, the biggest negative to me, it, and most people are going to think this is crazy, is weight. Yeah. It's I so like light. the bigger, yeah. heavier cameras. You know, it feels better. Um, not at the time that I shot that water footage where I had the yeah, 90, the 80 bag, pound. Yeah. Which this would have made a great it. deal. Yeah, exactly. I finished Stuff like that. Exactly. So it didn't matter, yeah. Brian, they shot in 1080 with an Alexa XT. So I mean, like, you, there you go. Did you hear that? Yeah. They shot in 1080 with an Alexa XT. We won't say what movie that is, but yeah, it, I will it not did say, star Nicolas Cage. It did star Nicolas Cage. And they shot with There's a wet bag. There's 800 different movies that yeah. star Nicolas Cage. Well, that's good enough. They can figure it out. Wet bag, Nicolas Cage. Exactly. Alexa XT, 1080. So yep. think about that. So again, all that stuff gets thrown out. My only other, my only other thing that's, I think, interesting to point out just so you guys know, our rig, when we fully build out this camera, we priced it out the other day. If we take the camera to yeah. account, not a lens, just the camera and all the GAC when we have that shoulder rig that we use on heirloom and all that stuff, yeah. it comes out to close to, what was it, nine grand? Yeah, it's it's, a, it's under nine, but It's not right much. around $9,000 yeah. for us to build with out everything that we our put camera. onto it. That's with a wooden camera shoulder rig, yeah. wooden camera cage, all the gimmicks, the Shogun, all the stuff that we use, it gets close to about nine grand. Yeah. Um, and that's not counting Panasonic uh, super expensive cards, which I started calling those Panavision cards because they're so expensive. <laughs> they are so expensive. It's but they're good. good. Do it. No, that's they're the great catch. cards. They are absolutely great. Panavision makes the best lenses you can't own on Earth <laughs> that's because they're, they're, uh, they're priced out of the yeah, market. They are. Panavision, Panasonic cards are the best cards on the market, in my opinion, but they are pretty expensive, and we're not dumb to that. We don't shamelessly plug those no. for any other. We just haven't tested the other ones, and I'm not going to spend money on card tests. And I just I don't have that kind of money. I'll just go ahead and put it kids. out there. We, we are not paid endorsers for No, Panasonic. we are not paid by Panasonic whatsoever. Uh, and honestly, I think we'd probably be fired if we were paid endorsers. Oh, yeah. but, um, we're not even no, Lumix, I'd, Lumineers. No, I just, I just like telling our experiences with a certain camera. Now the Panasonic cards it's came this. as part of the uh, came as part of the heirloom thing because they did because we were having problems with yes. all of our cards. We bought the Delkin cards to cover ourselves yep. and they said, "Hey, do you want to test these cards out?" And we were like, "Oh yeah, that exactly." Cool. So we had already covered it. That would yeah. cover We'd already exactly covered it. That, they, they did that as as a favor to yes. us because they that knew that we were nervous them. about our situation. Yes. So that's where that comes from. Yeah. So yes, we did not buy those. That's why I've said they're not. the best cards, but we we have to return them, so we yeah. don't get to keep anything. Panasonic doesn't give us anything. Yeah. So there's no endorsement on that backside. So there we have to not. buy them like the rest of you. So I'm just telling you, the Delkins are questionable yeah. at this point. They are, as we said. And in all honesty, what we've done so far with 4K. Has mostly been long gob still. Yep. And uh, our cards that we already have work fine for it. Yeah. So far. Hey, uh, I'm a little nervous about. Do you remember the name of the the, the brand of the? Uh, uh -huh. Jefu, the, he's uh -huh. asking about the battery power thing. 
Um, I actually do not know. I do not get to keep anything from Panasonic. We just we shipped do off stuff today. Yeah, as we a matter did. of fact, Matt's probably watching. Sadly. And he's like, thank God I got my crap back. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah, we had to send stuff back to them. So we don't get to keep anything. Yeah, we do not get to keep it. Because that's not what it was for. It was basically like, hey, you guys want to try something? And that's the other side of them being kind of hands-off, like in a business sense. If they mandated everything that we did, then all of a sudden, yeah, now we're getting to a little more of a paid endorsement scenario versus, hey, we were going to help you guys out on this. Do you Are you interested in doing something fun? There's a big difference between the two. So that's kind of where it lands. Turbine's getting a little technical there. <laughs> that's funny. GH5 should raid record. Dude, I love that idea. I've heard that before. I think you're the guy that posted it. I love the raid record concept. Uh-huh. I think it'd be great. I just like the What card is in mode. our camera? Uh, probably a Lexar 1000. Our card right now? Yeah, the card in this camera is the Lexar 1000 at the moment. Yeah, because we're shooting. We're not even recording. We're not camera. even recording. We're just live. Yeah, it's 128 gig. Yeah, we don't record thousand. any of these. I don't waste Those are time. the cards that we originally bought. Yeah, our first cards. When we bought the GH5 many months ago. Scott R. Is this Scott Robinson? If it really is Scott Robinson... If this is Scott Robinson... Unless you have a lot of movement or plan on doing some seriously wild grading, I'm not sure most people need 400 megabits per second. There's no way that's Scott Robinson. No, that's way too technical for Scott Robinson. (laughs) I hope he's watching. I didn't watch. Uh, That's too Uh, funny. Yeah, those cards are expensive. Try the Angel Fire, Angel Data, Angel Lasers, Angel Cats. I will Angel say cats are on the loose. that would be my one biggest massive complaint about the Panavision cards, honestly. Yeah. Is that they are truly expensive. But they are No, not they're BSTF, too, bro. For us they're, they're baby not, seal troll force for I sure. Know. But for for what we have to deal with Angel with, Bird, thank you. With a red and the price of red cards. Yeah. Still a decent price. Yeah, totally right. You know, um, that is probably, honestly, the other big thing that got me attached to the GH5 quickly was that we can shoot, instead of 600 or 700 gigs of footage in a day, yeah. or more, you know, and some of the features I've been on, we've done a terabyte a day. We have, like, we have like how many of these do you have? 28? We have 23 now, because that one yeah, says NFG one on it. Yeah, we have 23 red cards. you know how much these are a pop? When, they were, when we when, bought them? When we bought them. How much were they? When we bought those, those were... Close to 1500 a piece? 1500 a piece, and we have 24 of them, and one of them's broken. Consider Completely. that. Oh, you think a red's better? That's a long Go get some media, boy. Have fun with that shit. They don't oh, make that shit small of a card anymore. Yeah, they don't even make those cards. We're legacy now because yeah. we refuse to give up that. I like the MX way better. Uh, somebody asked Good earlier. Team. Oh, you want me to travel up? Uh, yeah, because I can't do it. Sorry. Yeah, I know. You can't do it. Was, it. Uh, it was I'm Scott trying. R. Unless you need a lot of movement or plan on doing something seriously while graining, I'm not sure most people need 400. Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of... Yeah, that's probably true. I uh, Yes, actually, that's a great point. No, I think if you're making a film, it'd be worth to have. If you're shooting something really once in a lifetime, I think it'd be worth to have. Um, but again, if I were shooting a film, I'd be shooting log on this camera. Yeah. I'd be shooting log. Um, maybe not if it were a documentary, but I probably wouldn't be shooting 400 megabits per second if it were a doc because quality in a doc isn't the most important thing as much as the, as the yeah. content narrative. So in this case, I'm not looking for crazy shot structure, so there's not a lot of coverage. I'm looking for long takes. So you're yeah. probably right. At the end of the day, I think the 400 megabits per second is really cool for filmmakers that are using this as a B cam, C cam, D cam, E cam, F cam, crash cam, interior car cam, whatever you might be using it for, helmet or cam. helmet cam, or somebody who's really pushing themselves uh, to use this as, as, as a principal camera, a primary camera, I think 400 megs per second is fantastic. Do you yeah. use the red AK we- weapon helium? I have oh. not. I will not upgrade because I'm not spending any more money on a red camera. I think we it's a waste don't. of money personally. Um, I have shot I think on they're great twice. cameras. Yeah. Or I've worked on one twice. I haven't shot on it. I was an AC. Yeah. Um, I think they're, uh, at this point, I would just rent. I don't think I'd ever buy. We have three reds. We have two scarlets and a dragon. Um, yeah, for the most part, I would. I don't I think would I'd buy another. At this point, there's no reason. I'd, yeah. I'd buy a GH5. I'd probably buy maybe. Maybe, maybe the EVA 1, not if I had a GH5, though, because I think it's kind of splitting hairs. But I'd probably buy yeah. one camera um, that I could work off of, and then I'd just rent all the rest of my cameras. Because yeah. typically most of our shoots are planned, so we don't have, like, it's not like a last-minute. We don't do a lot of, we don't do any wedding stuff. We don't do any last-minute no. yeah. type content. That. And what if we did, a GH5 suffices for all of that. So yeah. I probably wouldn't buy another camera. Um, it's a waste of money, frankly. When you can rent one and have the client pay for it, why would I own it? 
It's kind of like driving a. Yeah. To me, it's like cars. I love cars, but I can't afford the cars I want. Cars I want. So why not just drive something safe? Yeah. I mean, financially safe. No, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we've had a little discussion of. Um, Oh, dude, I don't care about transcoding. Most people I know aren't yeah. me, but I love transcoding. I think it's great because you can drink beer. No, I mean, I, I transcode just about everything for the edit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it depends on the project. I will transcode for deliverables as well uh, for color grading. Um, yeah, MPEG okay, makes a great... I'm trying to read the stream and I can't. Yeah. All right, so... MPEG makes a great point Did I miss there. a joke from Sailing Rewind? Did we? I know you've talked uh, about yeah. shooting the GH5 in low moment. light. How you light a scene? Do you shoot much natural light? Uh, yeah, so I yeah, fake we it. We fake a lot of natural light. We do. And then that's one thing that's where we we do. Yeah. As well. Um, but we fake a lot. I mean, uh, my. We do. My. Actually, in fairness, we learned this yesterday. Our professional style, collectively as DPs now, has become way too similar. It's way too similar. Like, to a problem of Jeff was shooting a second camera on a shoot and was shooting the exact same shots as me. Like, we were both independent. Yeah. We were shooting the exact same shots different times, but we basically just doubled down on the same footage because that's how our brains work and we both know exactly what we like yeah. to shoot. We just work together that long. But we do a lot of natural lighting. Uh, I've modeled my personal career after Deacons and Bradford Young. Yeah. So Bradford um, is the new one for both. And of Conrad us as Hall well. too. Yeah. I'm a big Conrad. Oh, Conrad all the old guys. The I'm greatest. yeah. All the classic ASC guys. Yeah. I'm into. But more modern guys. Deacons and Bradford Young are both who we yeah. jam after. Um, so Deacons, I think, is very naturalistic. I think Bradford Young is the most naturalistic DP on the planet as far as his lighting skill goes. Yes. So a lot I of times totally he subtly includes a lot of like you know very tricky practicals uh he's also the guy that will use like he likes shadow you can cl yeah. clearly see it in his body of work selma is not like a highly exposed film no. uh, which is Probably really risky. bradford and arrival truly arrival is a great one personally yeah. or like for a very technical reason underexposed a lot of shots right you know um yeah of course vilmos anybody classic asc yes i'm just talking yeah, about so modern I uh, more modern in that sense. We both were very big into the the older generation of DPs. Uh, yeah, we both, Trev, are still working on the same one. And Sound makes a great point. Uh, Deacons might become the best natural looking DP once Blade Runner comes out. Yeah, but see, yeah. that's the thing about Deacons is that is every single bit of that controlled. Oh no, it's totally controlled. Imagine a completely but black it space. Might not and he look like it. it. Yeah, but it won't look like it. It totally won't look like it. No, Deacons became one of my favorites when I was working a movie, actually in Mississippi, that was uh, where Oh Brother Where Art Thou was, and I got to see a lot of the interior locations, and how he turned a tiny room like this size into a room that looks like it holds 800,000 people. In it. Yeah, I think lighting is like the yeah. most missed point of anything. I think everybody blames the camera for uh, really just piss poor lighting, or none, no, no, yeah. none lighting. Uh, it's the same thing with... Uh, like I'm, I, I don't ever say it, but uh, just a kind of a professional thing, at least in my world, in my experience, uh, the term like white balance. Uh, white balance is kind of a video term. It's an old school term that, mm -hmm. yes, I used to set the white balance on a very cam that shot uh, HD or uh, 720p tapes that were $32 a pop. Mm -hmm. You guys don't even know how lucky you are to have cards. Uh, try shooting a catalog of footage. And or the suddenly, good old XLs. Or, or the XL1 yeah. with, with DV tape. But like... Uh, white balance was relevant then. Now I think you, if, to a certain level, you stop caring about white balance. You start dialing in the color you want. I don't actually like the way this shot looks. If yeah. I were judging this, I think it's too balanced. Like it doesn't, it this room is actually not, well, it's a little white, but it's not normally this white. It's actually a no, lot of tungsten not. and it fixes the color. My skin tone is naturally whiter and I'm red faced and it's not, it's not as good as I think it could look. That's a white balance thing. It is. But I could have dialed in the, in the color into the camera if I were really shooting this yeah. cinematically, and I would have. Me and Jeff have our own ways of doing that. So it's not zing on anybody. I'm just telling you, like, no, yeah. We don't really respond to white balance. We respond to color temperature. Yeah. Big difference. And if you get to that point, you start looking at a room differently. You don't think about how you're going to white balance the room. You think how the color temperature of the room, how you will affect the color temperature in the room. As opposed to letting the room dictate what you're gonna do, you dictate what the room is gonna do, and that's a big, like, shift in your thinking, maybe. Yeah. Jonesy or Jafox wants to know about the sword back there. That is from our Ether shoot. Yeah, that's with from Ether. Yeah, yeah. If you go to um, 
frame29films.com. You can see what we've been working on, or you can go to drewdirects.com and see yeah. a whole bunch of crap that I've done, my reel and all that kind of junk. Or the craftshow.com. Or craft show, but I don't know if craft show links to Ether anymore. It doesn't. Because those are films. We tried to keep our, our film, just so you guys know, we have two two brands, really three brands. We have three brands, yeah. So uh, there's there's Frame 29 Films, which do, did all the, the feature film narrative type movies. Yeah. Uh, we do docs too, but does all the movie yeah, we type do cinema do. stuff, yeah. is what I should say. And then Craft Show does commercial advertising, uh, basically commercial production. And then yeah. The Beard Color has it its own brand. Strictly that, color oriented work yeah. as well. So there's three brands involved. Yeah. Into craft show, we just but all three brands work as one unit together. Right, right. The reason they're separate, in case you're asking, is because of various billing things and tax things. Uh, it makes sense from a financial standpoint. Some businesses generate tax differently than others. It does, and it's just a, it's a much easier business model. By the way, if any of you are LLCs in the states, or LLCs, uh, let me recommend filing as uh, an cool. S. Being an LLC that files as an S. Um, an S Corp. Uh, the reason why is is I was just a straight LLC in 2016, and my tax bracket was 35 percent. Uh, or in 2015, I'm sorry, in 2015, my tax bracket was 35 percent. In 2016, my accountant advised me to shift everything to this S thing, um, and now my tax bracket is down to 18 percent. So you can only imagine it was much nicer to cut a much slimmer check than I did yeah. the first year. Exactly. That's pretty nasty. I hope that helps. That's just and like pro tip that, stuff. That's, that, that's, that's pro business tip stuff. business stuff right yeah. there, which yeah. I'm switching craft or uh, the beard color over to itself as well. Yeah, it's an LLC that uh, files as an S. Yeah. A good tax attorney or a lawyer can set you up with that. Um, oh. It's it's not an S corp. It's an LLC that files as files an S. Really S. important. Yeah. You have to pay yourself a salary, uh, a reasonable salary. So consider what it is. It doesn't have to be a ton, but. If you need a living expense of two thousand dollars a month, make sure you're drawing enough income to pay yourself two thousand dollars a month out of that business. If it's if it's not a full time scenario, you can pay yourself like five hundred bucks a month, and then quarterly you can distribute the profits to yourself or whoever else is involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but just keep in mind, like I'm not a tax attorney; I'm just giving you what I know. But yeah. it's just a way to help your tax bracket because paying self employment tax. Uh, currently uh, in this country is not fun. It's a, it's in fact you're penalized for being a dreamer, uh, <laughs> and that's not a political statement. I'm just telling you from a tax yeah. standpoint, you're penalized for not working for a corporation. That's how yep, this country. That's how this country actually works. Unfortunately, so, that is how it yep. works. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> just not a yeah. Same time. Yeah. Uh, uh, BSTF, bro. Lawyer style. Uh, Espen with the overhead shot, Fisher Dolly, and a jib arm. You're actually incredibly close. I don't think we used the Fisher on it for that shot, but we did use the jib arm for it. Yeah, it was. Was it the Fisher? The Dolly was all the way yeah, up. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Model 11. It has been uh, extension terribly long. on a fat cat slider. Actually, it's on a fat cat. What? Yeah, but was that the. Uh, That's the first, the first. Was that the one that uh, Marcus built? Yeah. All right, I couldn't remember if that was on that or either. No, that was on that. Yeah. yeah. So our gaffer went to Fisher and bought the uh, or built the actual dolly that we were. They're part of the pan of uh, the. Uh, what is it called? That's Not complete kind of nerdery. Sparky. Yeah. Tech stuff. The Fisher dolly program. It's yeah. this whole big thing of like you can't own a Fisher, but you can you lease you one. You can rent them and lease them. So they got to go build their own Fisher. They got to see it kind of custom built. That's like high-end film crap that, that yeah. I hope you aspire to. If not, that's cool too. I mean, there's no wrong with that. It's just, if you're a film nerd, it's kind of cool to think that one yeah. day you could be a shop that leases a Fisher. We won't do it because it's too damn expensive. It's like a $200,000 investment or something. Yeah. Yep. And yes, this this might be the longest show we've ever done sailing. Actually, I know for a fact it is because we're almost on two hours now. Okay, then uh, that's that's time yeah. for us to go play some bro for us. This has truly been the longest. Happy birthday! Done. Thank you, it's Jeff's fun. birthday episode. One of those things. Hey, and thanks for everybody for like pitching in some money to him. That's hey, super wait, wait. nice of you, Espen. Y'all use Panthers? We we actually until very uh, recently this, had a yeah. one of the oldest working Panthers yeah. ever. Yeah, that we, we used personally. We had a uh, uh, we had a Cougar Panther. Yeah, it's a it's an old beast. It was a gilf. A... <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, that's a good. We might way be to going do too it. far. Yep. Uh, I don't know what to say about this episode. It's chaos. It's Jeff's birthday. It We're is. happy about it. Yeah. I'm sure my wife is going to leave me. I have to go wash my children. She's not. In the washing machine, because that's how it works. She 
Sarah hates me. I've had a shit day. But happy cake day, Jeff. That's yep. right. Celebrate it. Buy some nice beer with that money. Actually, we're going to put it back into the podcast. Yeah, we are putting it right back into this podcast. Not podcast. I said that. That was wrong. Yeah, you're right. The YouTube live cast. Knuckle turds. We are knuckle turds. How much percent is this? This is eight. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we're getting hammered. We are. I'm going to keep the cuisine is all in your heart. You know what I mean? You you can't just follow, follow the recipe if... If you're following the recipe, you're just you're following the book. Now, if you're reading the recipe and recreating, that's where you know the, that's where the fun begins and everything starts and the passion starts to kick into the dish and you're able to use and humble yourself to different ingredients. to just be better and better and better so